All right, so Mr. Abraham had asked a question about whenever he... Please, I will leave a, a link to the video. You watch the video, you're going to see how we created a demo account and set up account as well, account as well. So you can do yours much better. All right, so Mr. Abraham was asking me, each time you tap, because I told you when you tap, once you click on the pair, I showed you how to do that. Now, I was explaining what happens here. The first one is when you tap on it, it's going to take you to your quotes. Quotes are your currency pairs. And you know, if I ask you an example of a currency pair, we've treated those. So you are always going to find those group of currency pairs when you go under the quote. So you tap here, it's going to take you to that place. The next place is if, for example, you have opened a chart for Euro USD. If you are around this place, when you tap here, it's going to take you straight to the US, Euro USD uh, tab. And then see. see, please open from 500 in that app. Let's see. To sell that. All right, so the next year is your trade history. Now, this shows you how much you have funded, and it's going to show you your trade performance for either the week, for a day, or whichever one. Just click on this calendar symbol here. Like you that are newbies, if you want to review your trades for the week or for a day, just click on this place. It's going to show you your history from last week or last month. You see whether you have made profit or your account is on drawdown. So that is what this thing is meant for. And then the next one is for news, but we don't need that for now. So that is that is what this spot uh, icon is meant for. So once you click on it, you go back to that, you go to that calendar symbol, you can review your account. It's going to let you know how far your account is going. It shows you your deposit, your withdrawal. It's always going to be shown here under this status. All right, for now, we want to jump to our currency pairs. So I have uh, removed other currency and just left only Euro USD on the quotes um, section. All right, that is that. So let's open the chart. I told you to open the chart, you tap on it, then click on open chart, and then it's going to be displayed. Now, the chart has been opened from here. What next can we see here? When you tap here at the middle, you're always going to have the left one is always your time frame. Now, remember, as I will walk you through the process, I'm going to explain to you that each green and red candle, we call it green and red, we call them candle, each green and red candlestick have their own role they are playing here. So each green and red candlestick here would, uh, what will it be doing? Each display has a time frame. Sorry, I can't even expand this. That's a problem. This is not a touch this thing. I, I'm supposed to zoom into this, but it's not working on my laptop. That's a problem. Okay, uh, never mind. If you can see yours from your own screen, it's not a problem. 
That shouldn't be a problem. So what we're going to do now, if I tap right in the middle, you have one minute time frame, you have five minutes. So let's look at how can you change time frames or what is the work of a time frame? Now, the time frame is simply setting your charts to a particular, you know, display. If you wanted to display on the one minute, your chart will be on the one minute. It's going to be displayed. And then that means if it is on one minute, each of these candlesticks here will re represent one minute. If it is set to five minutes or 30 minutes, that means each candlestick here is, is like it, it is 30 minutes. But the problem here is we'll let we'll teach you much later on what time frame is the best. Now, the smaller the time frame, the more you are going to see the candlesticks will be more displayed and scattered. The lesser you, I mean, the more, um, if you take a bigger time frame, the more the chart will be more uh, displayed in a customized form, but you have less activity of, uh, you know, candles displayed everywhere. So whichever one, if I put it on daily time frame, you can see that the view changes automatically and I can cover between this place to that place when it's on daily time frame very easily. But once it is on five minutes or one hour, that same place, before I will know, before I will view the end of this place, I have to shift the chart like this. Yeah. But if I go on daily time frame, instantly I'm going to be seeing stuff that are here and stuff that is at this place. So that is the time frame, the work of the time frame. We use the time frame for analysis. We use the time frame to, you know, project and also use it for focusing. Because if I use one hour, I will try to know that this is a resistance, this is a resistance, this is a resistance. So it quickly, you know, allow me pick the zones from uh, the lower time frames. So lower time frames will enable you, you know, pick setups on time bigger time frames will enable you pick setup uh at low time you have more time of waiting but it is more accurate you have more of high probability time. when you're using the higher time frames to the smaller time frame like if i set this time frame to one minute that means in every one minute the market will either come back to this place. Sorry, in a few minutes, the market will either come back here or will keep going down. And the faster you could be getting, you can be trading. But you don't want to be trading every one minute. Is that is that how to trade? No. You want to trade when the market gets to a correct zone where you know that the market will respect it. So but one minute time frame will always make a lot of movement on the chart which is not going to you know help you in a way achieve consistent results because the market we buy just now the market will be buying here and it will go here and sell and then the next time the market will start selling again it, it comes back here whereas if we use daily time frame yeah the only place we see that the market was spiking up the market was spiking up the market was spiking up is around this level so remember, when we are trading, we are going to be trading level by level. That means if a market was here, we are going to take decision. What decision do we take? We are going to ask ourselves, is this market still going to go up? Is it going to push up or is it going to push down? You ask yourself. Remember, I told you what we do here in the currency market or in the forest market, we simply buy and sell. So we are going to be looking much later on resistance and support. So sorry if you cannot see my chat, 
uh, use your own MT4. For those that are using laptop, they have double advantage because you can be on the Zoom and then open your MT4 and the phone. So remember, I'm teaching you about the time frame. So I'm trying to let you know that each candlestick here, we call this a candlestick. And then each candlestick here, whatever time frame you set it to, whether it is four hour, that means each candlestick is representing four hour. So if from here, we have up to 24 candlesticks. Now, if you add four plus four plus another four hour candle plus total multiply or, or add up the whole candlesticks to here, you will get the number of hours that have been spent for that market to crash from that place to this place. And then if you have to hold the markets to start reversing to the upside back to here, now you have to be taking note of how many hours you may need to be in this trade for this market to move. Now, the, the, the candlestick are simply your hour or minute rep representation. So if you want to change it, then you need to like come over here, tap at the middle of your MP4 and then click. Remember, I told you, let's categorize the time frames from one minute, five minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes is written M30. That stands for uh, 15 minutes. M30 stands for 30 minutes. From the one minute, five minutes, uh, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and we end at one hour. These are called smaller time frames. We call them smaller These time frames. Smaller. Then from the four hour daily time frame, the weekly, the monthly, these are called bigger time frames. So if I put this chart on the weekly, that means I want to see what Euro USD is looking like on the Euro, on the weekly time frame. And uh, you can see that, you can see what it looks like there. So, uh, excuse me, let me change my mouse and see if you can see anything better for me. Now I'm teaching them in five. When they are used to be five, we will now be using trading. Okay. okay, so you excuse me for a minute. We are going to move from here to trading view so we can view the chart properly. So I want to switch time frame with us so that once we, we have covered that, we know that we know how to work with our time frame and you know, know how to change your time frame because uh sometimes i told you when you put it on one minute you hardly view the, the the whole section of the chart but when you put it on daily or four hour it's easier for you to visualize oh, things four hours. So, so that's the advantage all right, so right now, those that have laptop, we have a web version which we call Trading View. The Trading View is more advanced for you to do analysis than the MT4. So you tap on the Trading View. Trading View is better used with laptop. But some people use it with, uh, what's it called? Some use it with. So this is trading view. Let me share my screen. Let me share my screen. Don't forget, we're trying to look at the time frame. So let me share my screen. All right, so we are now on trading view. Let me share my chat to you. All right, here I can expand and zoom in so that we can all see. All right, so this is trading view, the same time frame at this two bar here, we have the section. Remember I told you, if you put it on 15 minutes, each candlestick is going to represent 15 minutes. So GBP, this is GBP USD. Sorry, GBP is buying. Wow. 
fine on the 15 minutes. So, Now, this is 15 minutes time frame. What are we going to be learning much later? We're going to learn how to mark our bones. Wherever we see that the candlestick, okay, we've not finished. These are candlesticks. Candlesticks here, we have two colors. The green, the green is always represented for a buy. That means if I know the market is going to push up, whenever the green candlestick is coming around a certain level of interest, that means it's a buy that is coming up, a candlestick that is coming up with a buy. The red will indicate a sell. So what are we going to be doing? Remember, I taught us that in our introductory class, I told you that there are two things we do in the forex market. We either buy when the market is going down, Sorry, we either sell when the market is going down and we buy when the market is going up. Now, how do you know the market will go up? That is the question. There are two things we use to know that the market is at a level for a buy. I put it on three hour time frame. That means if I put this candlestick on a three hour time frame, that means each candlestick here represents three hours. Each, this is three hour candle, this is three hour. So that is three hour. Hour. Do you understand before I am moving too fast? Yeah, we do. Yes, I understand. Fire on get what you're right now. Fire on our altar. Let's do this. So, What we're talking about here, we are looking at time frames. Remember, what are the patterns of the time frame? I told you the time frame help you to one take trading decisions, gain confirmation, get confirmation if the setup you are looking at is at the level where you are going to be looking at the market for it to play out. Also, the, I said the time frame also will help you to view the market future and past tense. If I put GBP USD in one month time frame now to see what, will, what it looks like, we are seeing that the market is on a serious, very strange. The last month we were on a red candlestick, we, we sold this current month. This is the current month that is active here. How do you know a candlestick that is currently active? When you look at the left hand side, you will see that the currency price will be fluctuating. So that is the current candlestick. So GBP USD, without any mistake, we are still going to push down probably to where we have this level we are seeing here on the monthly time frame. So now, what did I do? I went straight to the monthly. It has helped me look at the market properly and give you a deep analysis. If I go to one hour, it can only show me little details that are, you know, within that short period of time. So now, if I have been able to watch the market on a monthly time frame and I see that the market will majorly go down, then I shouldn't be wasting my buttons buying it. But rather, I will be looking for opportunity where the market will give me entries to take a, a sell entry. So that is the idea in trading. So this different time frame you put here, whether I put it on daily. Now remember when you put it on a particular daily time frame, I mean on a particular time frame, it shows you what the market is doing currently. Now on the daily time frame, what do we understand here? Technically, we have broken below this support. So let me come and refresh your mind. There are two things we'll be learning here. We'll be learning support 
we'll be learning resistance and we'll be learning support. So anywhere the market is pushing downward with the red candle, we will mark that place. Don't worry, assignment is coming. Anywhere the market is, you know, showing a very impulsive move, like you saw how many, how many candle or how many, we took up to, we took up to three months or we took up to one month to get to this place. If you count each of these, I'm on a daily time frame, if you count each of these daily uh, candlestick, you see that it's more than a month. From here, this is one day candlestick, second day, day three, day four, day five, day six, day seven, day eight, day nine, day 10. Who can put that up together? So we have 10 days of movement from this group. But right now we have taken off this support because we buy where we buy at support, we sell at resistance. On your MT4 button, I mean on your MT4 app. On your MT4 app, there is a place to click buy and there's a place to click sell. So basic, basically, when I will be teaching you, I will teach you how to place these boxes. We call this a rectangle box, rectangular box. I'm going to show you on your MT4 app how to where to look out for it. So when I teach you, I will teach you that when I'm teaching you support and resistance, we will say the floor. We say the floor is where the price comes to and wait or react to and then start going up. Resistance is the ceiling or the roof where the price cannot go past that level and then it will begin to push downward. Basically, your floor will be standing, will be acting as a support. Support is a place where the market fails to go lower and then the market starts reversing to the upside. Support, I say, is a place where price fails to decline more, and then the market starts what moving to the up direction. Whereas resistance is a place where price fails to go higher, and then we start declining lower. Putting all these things, how do you know that? It's very simple. We simply use our rectangle boxes. We watch where there was a serious reaction now in your stage two what are you going to be learning we'll be learning what is called price action price action is simply um, looking at the historical uh yeah you'll be looking at the historical events on the charts now if we look at the left hand side of our charts you will discover that we have much happening to the left hand side. So what can we discover? We had a high point here where the market could not push higher. We started selling. To the left hand side, we had where the market also was falling. When it fell to a certain level, the market couldn't break lower. We went again to the upside. So price action is simply reading the chart nakedly that is why we are not going to teach you uh using indicators but we will be teaching you how to read and analyze the market nakedly the way it is because this is the best way so this is gbp usd we have closed below this support so we call this now a, a breakout we call it breakout now we will teach you two things we will tell you that when prices are support you buy will teach you that. But when the support is taken out, like price has closed below, you don't buy again. You now, you now trade it as a break and retest. That means the price has broken below. It's coming to retest it. Then what do you do? When it comes back here, you don't buy. You now take a sell position. And then what do you do? We're expecting GBP USD before the end of this month to come and touch this low level where the market moved with a very aggressive move to the upside. So that's what we're expecting on GDP USD. Are you guys following? 
Yes, I am. Yes, so, following. basically, I have given you some expo and assignment. Remember, I'm using daily time frame. I can't use one hour. But if I want to see this market on the one hour, on the daily candle, we are on a red candlestick. We are with red candle. But if you see on one hour, this market might be buying on the one hour time frame. That is why we use smaller time frame to see. Uh, if we want to take entries, we use smaller time frames to look at what is happening. Then when we expose you to more tools, technical tools, because we are dealing with price action. Under price action, we'll be looking at how to use those tools. Now, we discover that when the market is moving sideways, there's nothing to, to, to delay here. We have what we call a tool that moves like this. We call this tool a trend line tool. We use it to know when the market is moving diagonally like this. The market, don't move, the market does not move like this. It moves sideways. It moves a straight format. So we use these technical tools to make decisions whenever the market is touching, is making contact with this line tool we have placed here. So what are we saying? Any day GBP USD, either tomorrow, come and reach here, we now take another sell. The market will come all the way from here down. For now, the market came and was waging and touching at this bottom, you know, line I have drawn here. We call this a trend line. Now, when we go in details, we now learn for a trend line to be valid, there have to be multiple touches, at least two touches on the trend line. How do you know? When you connect the trend lines to the week of the candles, you have to make sure that you have at least two touches to validate that trend line. That means if price comes next time, it's going to respect that trend line. So now this is a valid trend line because we have touches around here. So the next time we want to take a sell position on GBP USD, it might be tomorrow. The market might come here and then we now click, we now press a sell. Then maybe one of these inside next people might break this trend line and go down lower. So that is that. So I am on the one hour time frame. So if I want to do, if I want to do analysis, I need to scale down to different time frames. I can do analysis for, for one minute. Let's do analysis, but you can see how small these candlesticks are. There are two minutes. So let's see on the one minute. I have to reduce it so I can see what is one minute time frame. What I will do here, I'm going to use my trend line. I'll make sure I connect them to all the highs. So another language we use for support is, remember we say we buy at a low and we sell at a high. So when I am connecting my trend line, I want to touch all the lows from the bottom. So now we... This is GBP one minute. So I've, I've tried to analyze the market on the one minute to see. On the one minute, we are bullish on the one minute time frame. So uh, GBP, we might be watching the market at this place. This is a horizontal line key. It's the same thing that functions like a rectangle, but this one is like a ruler that you just place at once. So so now this is a resistance point for GBP on the one minute. So I'm waiting for the market to come and I want the market to come and clash with this my trend line here. If we break above it, fine. I will leave it. But if we fail to break, this will be a sell entry because these are highs. At highs, we sell. At lows, we buy. So this is a technical line that I am using it to keep myself informed whenever price is touching because you can see that when we came in contact with this level we came we dropped as much as possible we came with a massive we came with a massive drop all the way from that place let me reduce the, the thickness of that line so when we touch this line we came all the way down now we are we are now rising so i'll be patient for price to hit you on the one minute when it hits the I'm still seeing that price might still crash all the way down. But if it comes out of that place, I will not take any decision. So this is one minute analysis. Now, if I scale it down to 
to 30 minutes. I have to know whether it is rhyming with one minute, what it's looking like on this. Now you can see how it looks like. That one minute, see what it's saying on 30 minutes. So it, it, it's not making sense. So rather than using one minute, I will go and use 30 minutes. I will see the market properly and know that what I'm doing. So on 30 minutes, where we have touches here, let's connect the line properly. We touch all the highs. All the highs are the resistant line. So let's keep that trend line there. And we'll still keep another trend line this way because we have price coming another trend line. Whereas this is now the main trend line. So price can decide to violate this one, but it will not violate this one because this is the main trend line. So if it if price come and touch here between now and tomorrow, we might take the sell entry by tomorrow once uh, the market opens because the market has already played out and passed. So we have two trend lines now. We have the one here and we have the one there. So now we, I have two places to sell this market. If it touches here and moves out of this trend line, I will hold it here. Here we must reverse the market all the way down. We're coming all the way from that place because the market is a sell market, it's not a buy market. Are you following? Basically, this is everything about forex. There's nothing here. This is just what you do. And so this is this is the analysis here. I'm I'm holding a sell. I've been selling with it with, with money. I've been on the sell. So if it gives us another entry for sell, so if we from after next week. The group will be really active because you'll be sending your analysis on weekly. See what I have analyzed very fast now. We've analyzed it three years ago. Where did I say? What did I say? Who can explain what I said on GDP three years ago? I said if the market pushes to this trend line, we are going to there and come down from there we start selling because that is a resistance for this day then what did i say again i said if the market passes this place we will not sell it we leave it the next place we are going to sell is the next trend line there we we'll sell it it's going to come all the way down from that place do you understand yes sir with you so i have cleared basically what the what is the work of the time frame the time frame is helping you you know focus the market from different views and you have been told that each candlestick depending on the candle uh the time frame you select each candlestick represents 30 or whichever one you have after so that is what i say Is there any question for now? Okay, sir. I have a question, sir. Yes. So, anytime the market gets to a resistance level, that means definitely the market will start selling, start coming down. Yeah. For now, let us let us accept the fact that is. All right. So let us go and do this thing on our MP4 before this section we will end this section. So, but I think for today we can stop here. But let's let's try to play around MP4 a little bit. So this is your MP4. I put that on a daily time frame. So how do we find the tools around MT4? Tap on your on the middle screen, the middle of your app on your MT4. We now look out for these three sets of buttons here. You can see it there. Click on it. Then if we are looking for the rectangle tool, we click the plus sign. Go downward where you see rectangle, you select it. Now, 
or euro usd this is a support we mark that place that is a support on the daily time so if i need it again i'm going to the next time it will be added and it will be stored as my frequently used here used to. so i have marked those two places this advice for euro usd if it touches here the market must be active now i will also mark my high points where the market is going to be selling so I have marked it. Basically, you don't do anything until the market comes to those places. That is when you trade. You take a buy that uh, decision. So we tell you that trading is 90% uh, waiting and 10% you do buying and selling. So imagine we have to wait for Euro USD to come to this place before we taking it back it's almost close to that place and it's, you see it's buying and it's pulling out from there so that is that on your mt4 so how do we get the trend line i want to clear up this line to so clear them off click the same two because when they are when they are uh you may need to update your analysis so when you need to do that just click on the delete sign select all of them i have wiped them off so you can see it's clearer there. It's clear there. So now we want to look for the trend line too. That too I was using to okay. So now to use this, you now 